sexual assaults, domestic violence, the, the legislature this last round, what kind of tools did they give you this last time around to help uh, enhance uh, prosecution and uh, prevention? One of the things that they did for us was clarify and simplify the rules that we engage uh, with on the street for police officers in terms of domestic violence. Uh, we made it much more clear who is and is not covered and really narrowed that class to the people that it really applies to. Uh, the power and control relationships that ultimately are the most dangerous and therefore the ones that require a specialized and different response. Okay, you talk about power, control, vulnerability. How does somebody, whether it's a man, a woman, a child, how does that person not be a victim? Because a lot of this stuff goes on behind closed doors and homes. A lot of it has to do with the response that we make as a community before the assault ever occurs. With the empowerment and the community that we create that allows people not to be isolated, not to be vulnerable, long before they ever get targeted as a potential sexual assault victim. What, uh, is there something that kind of gnaws at you still, that's something that you think, you know, if we could just do this, we'd be able to break free and, and cut the number from 74 to say 30? The influence that alcohol and drugs play in terms of both creating vulnerable victims and emboldening perpetrators is something that has to be addressed again at a larger community level because most of those are legal substances or at least uh, alcohol certainly is and yet it definitely plays into uh, the victimization of our community and so I think that's something that we have to address as a community I've always said that if we can cut alcohol problems, we probably cut crime in half. Uh, I mean, how far off am I? You could cut violent crime probably by more than half. Do you have anything, David? Uh, let's see. In terms of uh, same sex sexual assault, have you seen an increase uh, in that here in Rapid City? I think we've seen more reporting, and again, I think that's a positive. I think that there were times initially, I've been doing this 20 years in this town. And there were times when I think those events went unreported because people were afraid to make their sexual orientation known. I think that we have created a more welcoming and safer place from which to report. And so I do think we're seeing more reporting. I doubt that we're seeing an increase in perpetration. So ultimately, an increase in reporting is usually a good thing. So, so are you reaching out to the community as a whole to, to help those victims? Absolutely. The goal is to ensure that every victim of any relationship uh, feel free and safe to report when they are a victim of crime and to be treated fairly and not re-victimized through the court system.